Hello fun people, I'm Isaac Carlson, and today we're going to discuss every ALCA agent we know of from Phineas and Ferb. While spy organizations have formed across Phineas and Ferb's world, including groups like SHIELD, the British Spy Union, and the Canadian Organization Without a Cool Acronym, THE Organization Without a Cool Acronym, or ALCA, was special because they focused on using animal agents. For centuries, there has been a long-standing tradition of animals fighting off evildoers across the world. In prehistoric times, Bunka de Bunkaquan fought Doofengun. In 1542, Master Perry the Platypus fought Doofus Khan. At the turn of the 20th century, Swery the Swan faced Professor von Doofenshmirtz, and eventually all of these agents would form organizations to ensure that they all had a nemesis to fight. In 1914, a platypus agent was a part of a group known as the Secret Order of the Knights without a cool acronym. But by the 2000s, ALCA was the animal spy agency that was on top with divisions across the world. The animals who fought evil and wore fedoras were finally all brought together. There was a division in New Mexico that was known for managing the elusive Chupacabra Agent CH. There was a Seattle division that originally was home to Peter the Panda, who was a cool, cunning, and curiously cuddly agent capable of performing highly improbable probable judo maneuvers, and there seemed to be an African division formed by Agent P when an intern went rogue. The platypus recruited a gorilla, a cheetah, rhinoceroses, an elephant, ostriches, a new, a warthog, a zebra, a giraffe, a lemur, a baboon, a monkey, an ape, lions, and antelopes. We are most familiar with agents though from the tri-state area, which has two divisions protecting it. Admiral Wanda Acronym led one with the help of her unpaid intern named Carla, and most famously guided Agent Pinky the Chihuahua to fight Professor Poofenplatz. But of course, the most well-known leader in ALCA who looked after the tri-state area was of course Major Francis Monogram. With the unpaid intern Carl, director Diphthong in accounting, Ray Liotta supporting the organization after helping Monogram in the academy, and one of the division's newest recruits, Monty Monogram, they had the majority of agents we are aware of under their jurisdiction, including the incredible Perry the Platypus. The semi-aquatic egg-laying -like mammal of action was always ready for a fight against his nemesis, Dr. Doofenshmirtz. He was a highly trained platypus of mystery, who had incredible fighting skills, expert knowledge on disguises, a deep love for his host family, the Flynn Fletcher, and he was always willing to keep going to stop evil from spreading. Of course, he was an incredible agent, which is why, later in his career, he was tasked with forming a team. With the mascot of the Hardy Har toy company, Harry the Hyena, Karen the Cat, Maggie the Macaw, and Dr. Doofenshmirtz, who was able to join because he was raised for a period of time by ocelots, they formed an unprecedented alliance that allowed them to take on much more diabolical forces. For the most part, though, agents worked alone, were signed to a single evil scientist and were animals. Only Doofenshmirtz, a xylophone, Norm the Robot, who was fired shortly after his hiring, and Planty the Potted Plant, who actually received a medal by Major Monogram for assisting the agency in their darkest hours, were known to join ALCA without being animals. The rest were non-human, crime-fighting bringers of justice. Many of those agents we actually learned about through their secret files in the discontinued app Where's My Perry. And believe it or not, some actually have names that we know of. There was Gary the Gander, who was adept at finding great hiding spots, was able to fly long distances and enjoy tropical vacations. Manny the Mongoose, who was small, nimble, and was ideal for underground missions. Newton the New, codenamed Agent Silent G, who kept to himself and was recognized by his luxurious beard. And Herman the Hedgehog, who could fit into small places, often went unnoticed in his disguise as a coconut, and was the perfect size and shape to be tossed like a football. Make sure you don't confuse Agent P the Porcupine, though, as Herman the Hedgehog, because the Little Porcupine did not like to be mistaken as a hedgehog, which I can see could have been a common occurrence. <laughs> Other agents with names included animals like Sergey the Snail, who handled low-level threats and had a weakness of salt. Dana the Duck, who was very flexible to take on semi-aquatic missions and was very good at hand-to-hand -hand combat. Kelvin the Cat, otherwise known as Agent Kitty, who was a ferocious fighter with razor-sharp claws, had natural stealth attacks, and was exceptionally cleaned, and had a lovely singing voice. Ferdinand the Frog, who got along well with Agency the Cow was an exceptional swimmer and naturally exterminated unwanted insects, and Terry 
the Turtle, who was an agent from the Second Dimension and was adopted by Baljeet in that other world. Speaking of the Second Dimension, a lot of the agents in the primary continuity became evil cyborgs for a period of time in that Second Dimension, which is pretty wild, pretty cool, and totally is in line with the adventures that this show offers. Terry should not be confused with either of the other Agent T's, which includes a sea turtle based in Easter Island, or the other Agent T who was a turkey who left the organization one November. While we know many names of agents, the grand majority of the members of Alka don't actually have their true names revealed. Their co-names are all we have, and their secret identities are kept locked away from us. This includes agents like Agent B, who was a bear who was claustrophobic in elevators and was unavailable for missions during the winter months due to hibernation. There's also Agent O, who was an elusive ostrich, Agent H the Heron, who had a long-lasting feud with Agent P the Pig, but no one actually remembers why, Agent P the Pig, who had a keen sense of smell making him an excellent tracker and was someone who loved the agency Christmas party each year, Agent K the Kangaroo, who felt the same way about the parties and used her pouch to hide secret gadgets and weapons, and Agent C the Crocodile, who was someone who actually disliked the parties because they didn't like having their photo taken. Agent M the Mouse may have been small, but was a ripped little guy with bulky arms and abs, similarly to Agent F. This fox could roll up his fur to expose bulky arm muscles and was someone who could sneak out of any trap, was efficient with weapons and gadgets, and played video games during his free time. We also know of one Agent O the Owl, who had keen vision, silent flight for stealth missions, and was an enthusiastic dancer. Agent D the Dog, who specialized in tracking, instinctive chasing, and loved group sing-alongs. And Agent C the Chicken, who had a requirement to avoid missions with worm agents and was most effective with a large hand. Hammer. Agent W the Worm actually agreed with the decision to keep him apart from Agent C, but for a much different reason than protecting his own life. To him, it was important to keep his devil may care attitude away from her no nonsense thinking. Agent E the Bald Eagle had similar requirements to Agent C, for they needed monitoring when they were around worm and rodent agents. If you couldn't tell by now, Alka was pretty notorious for repeating codenames, which could quickly get confusing to say the least. I mean, there's literally five different agent. R's. There's Agent R the Raccoon, who is often mistaken for a villain due to appearing to have a classic bad guy mask on. There's Agent R the Rabbit, who is a rogue spirit, an expert hacker, a master of disguise, and should not be confused with Dennis the Rabbit, who betrayed the agency. And there's a reindeer, who has powerful antlers, is rumored to be able to fly, and enjoys cookies, eggnog, and salty snacks. A rhino, who went after Doofenshmirtz at one point and completely ruined Doof's fun with fighting an agent. And there was a rat, who was recruited by monogram after he got fired and was integral in defeating Rodney and Love Muffin. Small or large, big or strong, it didn't matter. Truly agents could come from anywhere as long as they could assist the agency in defeating evil. I mean, come on, they even had Agent S the Squirrel, who was actually the envy of the other rodents with his bushy tail. Alka just wanted the best agents they could get, which is why they hired Agent B the Bulldog, who had a bite worse than his bark and had brains and brawn in a single wrinkly package. That's why they're so willing to bring on fully aquatic animals like the koi agents and Agent W the whale. This massive mammal especially became very useful because he was willing to take a big bite out of a mission or doofenshmirtz while he also was able to enjoy steam after a long day of being an agent. You can easily tell by looking at Alka's lineup that these agents each had skills, strengths, and capabilities that set each of them apart. One of the best agents suited for the most dangerous of missions was the lizard agents, who were not fearful of losing a limb since they could regenerate. But while we get to learn about so many agents from their secret files, there are many other animals who we only know serve Alka. A llama, a snake, a shark, an aardvark, an ant, a bat, an armadillo, an octopus, a goat, a moose, a possum, a tadpole, a beaver, a penguin, a horse, and a pelican all have continued the tradition of giving their lives to keep the tri-state area safe from evil. And I think every single Alka agent deserves our utmost respect, gratitude, and and thanks. But have I declassified every agent of Alka? Were there any that I missed? I mean, there's four seasons of this show. I think it's possible I might not have caught everything. So let me know anything you discovered about these honorable agents in the comments. Also, make sure to subscribe and click the beautiful bell, and then click on another magical video in the description or on the screen. Finally, thank you to my patrons. Thanks for watching, and have a magical day.